this hand raised, so okay, I can unmute him. Okay, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, Mike. No, you that, should... that was the question, and uh, thank you, Thomas, for answering that. Or we'll find okay. out next week if other programs do the same thing. Yeah, and right. it's not it's not a competition. It's more to show that we can actually look at the same data regardless of what tools you're using. That's kind of the intent of this, uh, uh, as you know, of all the BIM storms. Okay. Okay. So one other thing that we have, we have the second model that's called the um, industrial tech building, which happens to be a building. It's actually not on a on this campus. It's a, it's actually in a, a manufacturing facility for a company called Opto 22, which was used at uh, several um, campus locations of different community colleges to put sensors in buildings to get information about what's going on inside the building from a sensor point of view. And Thomas, I just noticed that the lighting control is not on in this one, but I can actually get down to the equipment level. We probably haven't set this building up with the live link to the lights on, lights off option, or maybe... Uh, the, for 22? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we just need to update that. We could do right. that later. But, I, yeah. but, yeah, this building has a lot you're not, of... You're not, showing, you're not showing your screen, though. Oh, I'm not? I'm not? Okay, yeah. sorry. It should be. It's still my screen. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay. All right, so let, let me back up a little bit here. So this is the Opto 22 build. It's a two-story building. Um, it's actually not on this campus. It's on another. It's another location. But we're using this as a uh, a file to either simulate. Okay, what happens if there's an existing building on campus that actually has sensors attached to it, or we could use this for redesigning it too, just the same way we did it for the clinic. But in this building, you'll notice when you look at the first floor, for example, there are sensors scattered throughout the building. I don't remember how many there are. There are quite a few, all the way from. Uh, temperature sensors to individual pieces of equipment or even whole building energy information too. So for example in the mechanical room, if we go into this mechanical room, um, the equipment, this is kind of a different approach than the model that we just saw in Revit. The equipment in this this particular model, there wasn't a Revit model to start with, but there's a lot of specific information about individual sensors. So for example, we uh, there's uh, two chillers and two return return air temperature sensors in this mechanical room. There's a boiler, there's a whole building power information, and there's outside ambient air temperature sensors and humidity sensors sitting out here. So these are low level of detailed geometries, but they have the links to the information coming from these sensors. So for example, if I look at the outside air temperature and click on display, it reads off of that sensor and builds up uh, a real-time uh, view of uh, what's happening uh, in this building which happens to be in Southern California so you see the, the outside air temperature uh, was 73 degrees uh, just a few minutes ago and you can uh, say what does it look like the last seven days or last 20 you know or a specific date so you can see the days going by here so we're storing historical data as well as feeding live data from the Opto 22 system so that's the outside air temperature then if we go into the whole building power, I know that Andreas yesterday when we had a conversation with Balfour Beatty, that we were trying to figure out if there's anything in these buildings that would give us information about how the building is performing. And this is the one building that we have sensors attached to it. So this one shows a whole building power usage. And you could see uh, middle of the night, there's not much power use. And then and as morning kicks in, obviously everything starts powering up. And you see a minute by minute kind of a chart here for the last 20, 24 hours or again the last seven days you can start seeing a pattern going on here as well too. So we want to use this building to do several things. We want to, to it'd be nice if we can actually decompose this even and say well what was the design intent and show the, the final output. As, as always happens in these BIM storms none of these projects or buildings actually have a full-blown and there's no single client that actually says well we've done the whole thing. There's, there's snippets of things that have been happening and and uh, the California Community College's work is kind of the closest where we're touching a lot of these different parts of the life cycle. So it's a good opportunity to say, okay, if we have this piece plus this piece, then we can start using this building and tracking energy use and using it for uh, reducing energy use, etc. So that's the uh, the sensors. And there's other, like if you go to the chilled, what is this, chiller one flow temperature, it has the same thing again. It actually is specific to this piece of equipment you can actually see the uh, what's what's going on with this this piece of equipment in the last 24 hours or last seven days as well too. Okay, kind of see interesting patterns of what's going on here. Why did it 
spike like that for two days. Is that two days? Yeah, and several days for some reason it stayed up here and these other days it went down. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing that we did very successfully in the last couple of um, conference presentations we did is uh, now what happens if you have a work order system where um, uh, the uh, occupants of the building. The building's in operation now. We want to start reporting things that are happening in the building. Uh, that the, the room is hot, the room is cold, the water's leaking, the the the, uh, the sink doesn't, uh, the cold water is not flowing correctly, whatever. The point of this work order system is to get the audience, and we plan on doing this in Orlando as well, to give the audience access through their smartphones and to say you don't need to know anything about BIM, but if you have um, structured data, you can actually do things like this. You can say, okay, I'm, a, I'm in this building, and you have a pull-down, and this, this pull-down is the equivalent of uh, the, uh, the uh, site plan that we saw earlier. So the building names are coming from Fusion, structured data about facilities. So I can say, I'm in the industrial tech building. What floor am I on? I'm on the first floor. What room am I in? I'm in uh, Office 109, and uh, then in this room, room is hot. And uh, how soon do I want to I say it's urgent, and I submit. And this sends a request out to the facilities uh, administrator on campus. It sends an email back to me as the requester, and it also even color codes uh, the the building. Um, if I opened it up as an admin, I can actually start seeing, in fact, let me open up the email. So that, that's what we want to do next week. We want to do like a five-minute exercise with the audience where we actually show them uh, here's how you would actually work um, uh, how it would actually look if you were working uh, on campus and you got a work order in, uh, and the work order actually starts to show on the plan here. Let's see if this worked. I don't know if I had it set up here right. Um, no, I'm not. I'm not set up right here. I haven't set this, the site up here right. But it would show a color coded. Oh, here comes a work order in room 109. So that's one other workflow. So what happens when the buildings start getting delivered and the data is structured? And now we have it back into the system. And now at the site level, we also want to show how that would actually feed back into Fusion. So in Fusion, at the state level, they want to track spaces and condition of spaces. So to create that complete loop where we started from the beginning of doing here's a program requirement for a new clinic. Now we completed the clinic, we're running the building, we're managing it, and we're reporting data back up to the fusion system. So we get that complete loop going throughout the whole process. That's uh, Simon, for the work orders you have to be in edit mode. Oh that's what it was. Okay. Yeah. I need some training myself. <laughs> <laughs> That the work order actually is interesting because we really kind of focus the audience on you just need to do this. You, you, you're touching this. You actually don't know anything about BIM. You don't need to know anything about BIM, but you can actually send in work orders. And let's actually open that up again just to show. So you actually could see there's work. There's a work order list here, and so it starts showing you. Uh, here's a work order that work orders that are coming in, um, work requests, and it will start listing them. So at the BIM forum in Tacoma, we actually had um, several hundred. Uh, work orders coming in over the, the few days that we were there. For some reason this one didn't. Oh, there it is right there. Okay, the work order came in. So I'm the admin now. It's telling me what's happened. Somebody sent it a hot request for this room. And then I could decide uh, who's going to assign. You know, I'm going to spend an hour doing this. I'm going to assign it to uh, a new person uh, named Thomas and put in his email address and he'll get a, a request there and assign it by trade. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do here and it actually color codes um, the floor plan and shows uh, where where is that room. So this is a view only uh, interface here for the admin person to actually see, okay, it's room 109. And the fact that we have equipment in these rooms, if you think of the Kobe example that Thomas just gave you, if you had that information, you can actually start to see, okay, um, you're in 109, uh, okay, let's see what's in room 109. Okay, we have a thermostat. Maybe something's going on with a the thermostat. So if it had an air handling unit or whatever, it knows what's near it, basically, or what's associated with that room without diving into the, the bowels of a detailed BIM model. In this case, it's just, well, we just need to respond to this work order. What's going on around it? Let somebody send out somebody on site. That's the storyline I want to show. So from an construction owner's perspective, if they're looking at 
FM handover and they're looking at how to use BIM for the life cycle, if we have a collaborative approach like this where all the software is talking to each other and you have web services where you're not having to constantly go and am I looking at the right room room number it's coming from here and it originated in the original design and now we're tracking the performance of it and now maybe next year we want to renovate or build a new building or an addition or another building like this needs to be built on another campus we can take lessons learned of how this is performing if we're going to build another industrial tech building and not make the same mistakes again that whole that's kind of the storyline that I, I'm planning on telling next week. If anybody has any input on that, let me know.